Hey fellas, did you know that in 1983, when Dallas Cowboys running back Tony Dorsett ran that 99 yard touchdown run against the Minnesota Vikings, that there were only 10 guys on the field for the Dallas Cowboys? I did not know that. I just learned that today. I was blown away. Tony Dorsett is uh, one of my favorite running backs. I do not uh, typically like or cheer for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, just a thing growing up, I, I don't know why. Uh, we watched every game that was the first place I went and saw a game was in the old Texas Stadium. Uh, but I, I was just not a Dallas Cowboys fan growing up. Uh, I am a fan of fantasy football though. And we just finished our season. And so I wanted to talk to you guys uh, about some of that. And I wanna say all this is in fun, right? So um, yeah, I, I have maybe an odd sense of humor, I guess. But um, a couple of years ago, I, I wanted, we, so I, I should say for fantasy football, we typically don't put money on it. Uh, it's just a group of friends of us at work uh, within the shop. And so we're just kind of having fun, talking smack. And um, so so maybe five years ago, I had won the league and um, wanted to help talk smack as we got uh, the the next year ready. And so the season's going on. I'm like, what what do I do for the, for the loser, right? I, I want to make sure, uh, not the guy who finishes last, but the guy who who loses the Super Bowl? Uh, I want something for him, and so I came up with an award, uh, and it is named after somebody I greatly respect. Uh, but it's it's also to the point of, um, you know, uh, it's the greatest quarterback uh, that never won a Super Bowl, even though he had four chances, uh, and so none other other than Jim Kelly. So uh, I'm gonna talk to you about the Jim Kelly Award uh, winner uh, for this year and show you what we, we do for uh, the person who loses our, our Super Bowl in our league. Um, before I do that, I'll show you one of the other greatest quarterbacks and a card I just got in today. Uh, it's been lost in the mail uh, for a while. Uh, and so it came in today and, and I'm not kidding, it's been it's been about two or three weeks uh, where it just wasn't coming in. Um, so I saw this on somebody's channel recently. Could have been the Mangini uh, channel, John Mangini's channel. I could be giving credit to the wrong person, uh, but it's the old um, Dan Marino 1980 uh for Topps card. Uh, so I I love this card and, and when I saw it on somebody's channel, it reminded me of uh, that I, I used to have this card as a kid and I didn't anymore. Uh, a lot of the cards I lost as a kid. Some of them I've kept and some of them uh, are from the so-called junk wax overprinted era, if you will. Uh, but I still love the cards from that era. All right, so let's talk fantasy football real quick. Uh, the Jim Kelly Award is the award we give for the person who placed second in our league. And this year's award recipient is yours truly, Jim Kelly Award recipient. So they, they get a card. This is, you know, a way you help keep the card card hobby going by giving them to the winner. Unfortunately, uh, this year we're not spreading the love because I am the number one loser. The other bad news is last year, the recipient for the Jim Kelly Award was me. That's right. I got two of them. Now, in 2021, we took it off. It was the year after COVID and where things were coming back to normal. Uh, but the the year, I guess, of 2020, maybe the Super Bowl was in 2020. However, that works out. Um, the Jim Kelly Award winner was 
me. So since I decided to start talking smack, I've been collecting Jim Kelly cards. Uh, but I do love them. And I love that red helmet. I wish they kind of bring it back. Uh, I don't follow the bills too much, but uh, I like the old red helmet. All right. So last note here, guys, we have seen a whole bunch of videos online, or, or at least, you know, I would say quite a few about things like card alteration uh, and autographs and, and whatnot. Uh, so I, I wanted to put my two cents out there for everybody to, to, to shoot holes at if you want. Um, I went in and did as, as much research I think that is as worthwhile as possible. And so this is what I found. Um, and so for alteration here, I am talking about getting a card wet and drying it. I'm not talking about cleaning it or, um, you know, what, whatever, taking a bent corner and, and straight, straightening it out and, and putting it in a sleeve. I, I am talking about wetting a card, putting pressure on it and drying it. That's specifically the alteration I'm talking about here. All the research I can find says that when that is done to a card, it is in essence breaking down the, the bonds that hold the paper together in the original way it was made. So if a person wets or soaks a card, even if they dry it under pressure without with the proper amount of heat, that card is still in a degraded state to what it should have been by the way it was originally made. I have not been able to find an exception. So when people talk about soaking a car to bleach it, soaking a car to straighten out a wrinkle or a crease or whatnot, the chemical bonds in the paper are being altered and modified to a weaker state from everything that I have been able to read. So when you hear people say that it's not doing anything to the car, they're just restoring it, uh, I hear something totally different. I hear that the card is being broken down on a chemical level because the way it was originally made, any alteration to that with humidity uh, moisture, soaking, dabbing, new pressure, new drying techniques is is still changing it from a chemical standpoint based on the way the fibers were already made in the paper making process. And um, so obviously I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I, I think if it gets you a higher score, but you gave me a weaker card in the long run, it's a problem. For those who say, well, I'm not going to send it off to be scored. I, I just want it and, you know, it'll it'll be fine. Um, you, you made, well, not you. Uh, whoever did that, they've made their card weaker. And there's just, I, I haven't found any, any writings or evidence um, that supports that makes the card better or stronger or what I would call true restoration. So that's my two cents on that subject. If you hear people or, or you see examples of people doing that, everything I've seen is it is making the card um, less strong than it originally is. And then I also kind of wonder how long is the card good for? Let's say it gets another wrinkle in it with a new owner or, or the same owner and you re-soak it. How many times is it that soak good for if every time we're actually weakening the card when we do that? Uh, so I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but from the literature I found on making cardboard, making paper, uh, everything said it's bad for the fibers in it. So that's my two cents on it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See you guys.